speak about it. So obviously it is clear that you are someone who's very driven, someone mm-hmm. who's very motivated, just like when once you know what you want, you go out there and get it. But is there days where you just think, shit, like, is this me? Or is or do you think like, oh, I don't know if... Like, yeah, there are days. And you know I mean? think about all that I've done, all the work I put in, and all the credit that the supporters give me. Mm. And I think, you know, nah, I'm all right. Mm. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm one of the greatest. Yeah. And I said that before I knew I was <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, real. Real. So that's what keeps yeah. you going then. I, yeah, man. I'd, I just, no, nothing, nothing that happens in my life I can see, I can be surprised by. Mm. Nothing. I'm, I, I refuse. Like a couple of years ago, mm. I was the happy to be here kid. Yeah. But I refuse to be that now because mm. like, I've been working for so long, mm. you know? And there's, again, there's people that have worked longer and then got their time mm. but my time's now yeah. it's not in two years or three years the mm. time's now mm. the, I'm transitioning into the star I'm meant to be mm. you know I'm, an already, I'm already a fucking star mm. it's just about taking it to the next level mm. and if you don't have that that disgusting right. amount of self-belief yeah. in, in yourself then there's no, what's the point you know this may come across as oh, cocky or arrogant but I've got to give myself some type of credit yeah I can't wait for a next man to be like, yeah, you're sick. And then I can just start thinking I'm sick. Mm. If I don't think it myself, then the, what's the point? There's no point. Yeah, man. The you know? hunger, like the, the self-belief. And really I've, ooh, I've, even when I was a runner, yeah. I said, I'm the best runner. Even when I was an extra, I said, I'm the best extra. <laughs> even when I was like, back then, I, yeah, I always man, had real. this self-belief. So like me doing everything, what I'm doing now, yeah. you've got to think you're the best. You're the best. You've got to have yeah. what, like, Cool, if I said I'm the best and I ain't done shit, then people can say shit yeah, to me. Yeah. But I I grind for this shit. I put in work. Mm. You know, my work ethic matches up with this talk I'm talking now. Mm. You know, and no one can tell me different. Mm. I don't want to hear nothing. Mm. And that's just it. This yeah. sounds mad. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's, that's just something. the way I, I, I feel. I can it. vouch for that though. I can vouch for that because <laughs> I see it. I see it every day. You know, but, um, there's, 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 there's something new. Yeah, man. Like, new feature I, I've been film. blessed with like loads of amazing supporters and, yeah. and people that like scream my name to... God knows where, yeah, man. But God bless everyone that supports the journey and just believes in me, man, and gives me words and words of encouragement. And it's sick, man. It's sick to kind of be in a position where you can do what you love, mm. inspire people, and that's what it's about for me. It's not about the peas or any of these things. Like money's a bonus for me. Mm. You know, money's a byproduct. Money is financial freedom, and obviously everyone needs money to to to, to live and get by and X Y Z and and do the things they want. My whole thing is inspiring people and just being happy and, and successful, man. I think money ties into all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. You know? so, and and, and yeah. you've got quite a large following. You talk about supporters helping you get by. and, and Yeah, it's just, sick. Yeah. Like, I, I've, I've, I've gained myself such an, a network and such great relationships with people mm. that I will never run out of opportunities unless I decide to get lazy. Mm. And I've never been lazy as far as I'm concerned. My mum may tell you different. I'm mean, gonna tell you different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in terms of this, like, oh. this, 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 this desire to be the greatest, it, there's never been. I've never had like a dull moment where I thought, "Ah, oh, fuck this, I'm gonna yeah. give it up." Like I had one dull moment in 2016, beginning of 2016, when I decided to start hosting. I said, "You know, what? like my agent has just dropped me." Mm. Like, <laughs> there was just like there was, a, there was a lot that that happened at the end. There was a lot that happened at the end of twenty fifteen yeah. into twenty sixteen, and I thought, you know, is this is this really for me? Like I put in all this work, but does anyone really care? Yeah. And then you realize people do care, mm. but you just got to keep going. But well, that's it. Just mm. keep going, man. Hundred percent. Twenty sixteen, I was gonna give up. Twenty eighteen, I ended up in Toronto in an apartment with my one of my best friends, Nero the DJ. I was like Nero the DJ. Man. That following Monday, we was in, we was mosh pitting with bare Canadians. Mm. I just became a thing. Shit, <laughs> we, come from, we come from Ross Clark, council Forest. estates, Wolfham Forest to Toronto doing madness. I don't like, the, <laughs> mm. you know, shit ain't adding up. I don't know yeah. what the fuck is going on. You know, yeah, it's just yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was a good time. Yeah, it was a good so time. like obviously you touched on the fact that um, you you had this dark moment or this 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 
you got dropped by your agent and mm-hmm. what whatnot, and then you kind of that was the transition between you moving on to um, hosting and stuff. So yeah. how did that? How did that transcend? How did that kind of get well, the hosting thing? Yeah, how did that um, come about? Do you know what? I, I, you know, acting is always gonna be there, man. Acting is something I will always do. And I love it, man. Like that was my that was my first time I had a passion for anything. I didn't have a passion for anything else. Mm. And um, hosting was like <laughs> when I was young, yeah. I all I listened to was Eminem and Fifty Cent rap wise. Mm. And there was a summer where my mum went away, and my granddad was looking after me. I used to pretend I was a rapper. Mm. And I used to pretend I was a host and he was my audience. My granddad was my audience. And he used mm. to rap. 50 Cent, 50 Cent has an album called The Massacre. Yeah, yeah. And he used to rap each song word for word to my granddad. <laughs> I used to, Eminem, Curtain Call. I used to rap each song to my granddad word for word and pretend I was a rapper. Um, when I was young I'd done music I used to call myself Unit Kid we won't get into that because that's for a whole other <laughs> conversation but um, yeah man like I guess I was subconsciously doing it before mm. I even wanted to act it's weird yeah and then like anyone um, that like knows you or, or meets you knows how like innate music is to you do you know what I mean like, yeah man I've got like family members that do music mm. um, a lot of my friends do music and there was a time where I was going to more music shows than I was um, like going to the movies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just love music. I love being around like my rapper mates. Mm. I love them sending me their new stuff. Like I'm a fan of this. I'm a fan of this Mm, shit. mm. And I've never denied that. I've never said, oh, oh, you don't treat me like a fan. Like, bro, if if I think you're sick and I fuck with your stuff, then Mm. I'll happily tweet you or whatever it is. You know know how I am, man. Like, because you know me, you know what I'm like. But um, I remember going to a show in 2015. Um, Gecko sold out the O2, O2 Academy in Island. It was a room downstairs and Mike's Comedy was hosting. Mm. And um, we had an exchange, me and his manager had an exchange of words. And he was like, yeah, man, jump on. A man told me to jump on with Mike's Comedy, who was more experienced than me at the time in hosting. I had never touched the mic. I'd never touched stage. And then by the end of that show, I kind of realized, yep, this is it. Yeah. This is, yeah, Felt this it. toasting thing is sick. And then I remember 2016, January, February to March, loads of bookings just started flying in from yeah. one show. Yeah, yeah. I was getting booked in Portsmouth, Birmingham, Peterborough. Like, there was no Nero the DJ. Yeah, yeah. There was no Zek Snaps. It was just me and my boy, George Foster, back to back. Mm. taking train here taking train there taking a long car journey there and this was all for free there was no yeah. money <laughs> yeah. I only started getting paid from hosting in 2017 yeah. last, last year last year mate you know so I done a I done a no 20, end of 2016 sorry mm. but I done like literally a whole year of free shows and networking to get me to the point I'm at now so when someone says to me, there's no budget, it's good for exposure. Mm. That's a disrespect. Mm, mm, mm. What do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking what about? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, word. But, um, yeah, man, that grind in 2016 was fucking fun, man. Yeah. That was like the best time. I mean, I'm still having the best time of my life now, but that time there, that starting up point and the grind, the long hours, the... The using your own money to go X, Y, Z places. Mm. The, the, ah, mate, buzzing. Even thinking about it now, I get goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, thrive man. off that. that. Those were the days where, like, man re- was really trying mm. to prove a point. And so even then, now, I feel like I still have to prove a point. But yeah, yeah. that point I was trying to prove back then has been I'm proven. And now I've got to prove another point that I'm the fucking I'm greatest. So, like, yeah. obviously, um, with me... Yeah. One thing that a friend of mine said to me that really stuck out to me was that um, in terms of my branding, it's like I've got the spoken word and the poetry. Yeah. He says I operate like a T and the base of my T is the spoken word and the poetry. But what I do is I use it 
and, and, and I, I branch off it by going into other things, by going into film, fashion, music, and I create myself mm-hmm. this tea. Yeah. And that's something that I feel that you've been able to do as well. Yeah. Like you, you started off with like the with the acting mm-hmm. and, 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 and kind of in the in, in the movies and yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the performing arts world and then yeah. you've kind of branched out into like you said, music, mm-hmm. hosting, all these other things. So yeah. how do you feel like um how do you feel like that works for you? Has that been beneficial for you as uh, your brand being able to have something yeah. you do, but then branch out into other things as well, create a package? For yeah, yourself, man, I feel is... like, look, man, a lot of people know me as Nathan Hector, the actor. Mm. I've been in the Intent, The Weekend Movie, various short films online. I've had, like, all round together millions of hits online, but that still wasn't enough for me. Mm. What am I just going to be known as that actor that's trying to... Like, mm, mm. It's cool, trying is sick, but th- when I'm looking at my peers, I'm seeing... Woof, Ooh, ooh, I need to branch out and do something else. Fuck this. Mm. I can't just do acting. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I needed to branch out and do something else. And it's worked for me, man. Like People take me a bit more serious now. My name is buzzing around town now. Buzzing up and down the country. I'm getting books in like Toronto and... Bro, whose headline show have you not hosted, dog? <laughs> Every headline show is like hosted by Nathan Hector. Even um, the other day when I went to House of Pharaohs, like, oh, yeah, I wasn't yeah, even yeah. expecting to see you there. And I just see, yeah, Nathan Hector jumping, looking like Tory Lanez on stage. <laughs> like, like he's hosting, like it's his show, bro. Like it's his show, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like I can see the um, passion. Yeah, man, the like House of Pharaohs, they're lovely boys, man. I've got a lot yeah. of time for them boys, man. Um, really, really cool, cool mm. brothers, man. Talented, talented as fuck. Mm. Um, I can't even remember how I can. I think I connected with them through Seshi, you know. Yeah. Shout out Seshi because he's the reason. Next. He's a yeah. I am next. He's the reason I got the post Malone thing. Him, mm. Morgan Keys, they are the reason that I ended up in um, in Brixton Electric coasting for Post Malone. Mm, crazy. Um, I, I, that, that was the that was that footage from that show was a moment that everyone realised I am here to play no games. <laughs> I control the crowd of two thousand people. Yeah. And that was my largest crowd to that day. And I mm. thought, yeah. Cool. So yeah, like um, obviously being um, behind the scenes in both the music industry and mm-hmm. the film industry. Yeah. Are there as, are there or has there been any experiences or reality checks that have left you really like stunned or startled or been like raw? Like, I don't know what's like this or anything. Yeah. That, that <laughs> Some artist managers think they're going clear, bruv. You're on, you're a manager. That's it. Like, <laughs> that's just it. Yeah. Like. There's ways to speak to people, you know, and I'm yeah. I'm just saying this from experience. I can only talk from my own Your, personal yeah. experiences with people, mm. you know, and I've realised that people will only respect you based on their um, assumption on your position in the game, mm. and that's bollocks. To as yeah. far as I'm concerned, yeah, yeah. everyone should be treated as an equal. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. That's re- take someone for who they yeah, are. Yeah, man. Like take someone for who they are, mm. so and just show like, them the co- show them the equal respect that they show you. You know. Yeah. So you feel like there's a lot of that in in in. Yeah, man. I, and I've seen it with other people, but like a couple of people have tried to do it to me. Like especially mm. certain people's managers. It's like mm. I don't, I don't know, nah, man. Yeah. So then, how do <laughs> how, how, respect, how do you, you then know? handle yourself in that situation where like you? Um, I, I've wanted to snap, but you're gonna have to see them again. Yeah. You know, the industry is super small. Mm. You know, and when you're when you're in the thick of it, you know it. Like you know it's small. Everyone kind of knows everyone, and everyone, not everyone's friends, mm. but people know people, yeah, and people, people talk. talk, and you know how it goes. You know, so mm. I just kind of just learned to hold my tongue, man, and just just crack on, bro. It, yeah, it kind of is what it is, man. Like I'm, I'm not here. I don't like. I'm not here to be super super liked by everyone. I know that I'm cool. I'm blessed. You know, and there was a time where my manager sat me down and was like, Nate. You are so nice to people, people think you're fake, you know? And th- 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 this is just the game. Like, people aren't used to overly nice, nice people. people yeah. They're used to dickheads or idiots or people that talk to them like idiots. But, bro, just be nice. Everyone's human at the end of the day. Yeah. We all have jobs. Just play your position and crack on, man. And everyone secure the bag and go and live your life. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, um, we're going to wrap it up. But um, before we do, are there mm-hmm. any questions from our one or two guests in the behind the scenes. I know Yo, you got one, Ramon. Salute to your grind, you know. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, man. Appreciate and, it. And um, self-awareness is definitely everything. So now it's time for you to manifest the role. Mm-hmm. What's the role that you want to do? Mm-hmm. Well, say that one more time. What's the new role that you want to do? Yeah, what's next? Done? You said you, you talked new about kind of- acting. 
Yeah. Are you talking about in the acting here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, as in character wise? Character. Mm, what's the aim? Um, I want to play a superhero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what one though, but a superhero. Yeah. Fair what enough. type of battles are these? Um, I can read your mind. Oh, them ones, yeah. Take all your money. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how that's going to defeat Thanos, but you know. <laughs> 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 Ed, what are you saying? You got one? Yeah, man, I do. I do. Obviously, big up yourself. Thank it's you, clear that you're doing big stuff still. Yeah. And um, I mean, anyone should really look at you as someone who really sort of puts themselves out there and makes it happen. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, yeah, well, I think the question for me definitely is. I think you're involved in so much at the moment. Mm. Um, where do you want to take this? As far as I can, man. Like, man, I'm gonna, I'm getting more into the music side of things. I'm working with a guy called Nat Powers, who's my business partner and good friend of mine, basically family, man. So I'm working with him on a couple of things. Um, and just, just to keep pushing and moving forward and just breaking boundaries, man. Like, no one can create your own path for you. You need to, Create your own door, cut your own keys, and unlock your own door, and just stay in your lane, and you know. And as long as you believe in that, nothing else matters, because everything, like those who didn't believe and those who slept, when something crazy happens, they'll just act like they was awake the whole time, and by then you're not gonna care. So, yeah, man, I just want to take it as far as I can, man, and just and just see where things go, you know. You had a question for me, didn't you? Hey, you got a question. <laughs> You're all more there. Okay, mm. cool. What's your what's your, what's the next destination? Like, what's your favorite destination to host it that like, you want to? Do? Um, sure. I really want to do Coachella mm. 2020, 2019 even. Obviously. Yeah, man. Your life can change in a year. Speak You've got into existence, man. I want to do Coachella 2019, bro. Speak it into existence. So if you're watching this and you're from Coachella, I'm the best host <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Book me. I have no booking agent. Just come to me. The next one. Yeah, man. I wish I wish these 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 pods these talks were a little bit longer. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are gonna have to cut it there. My guy, my absolute pleasure, man. Love for coming God. down. Um, again, I'm gonna go Bruce Burgers and have a munch. <laughs> <That's a bit laughs> you know, like that. Again, 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 again. Thank Come you. On.